In this video, we will cover the calculation of mean, median, and mode in SPSS, as well as the calculation of range, interquartile range, and standard deviation in SPSS. To follow along in this demo, you will need access to the SPSS software, as well as the SAT 2016 PA data file in SPSS.SAV format. Before we move into a demonstration of how to use the software, let's briefly review how levels of measurement determine which measures of central tendency and which measures of dispersion we can use in our analyses. Recall from our previous discussions that nominal variables are unranked categories. Because the categories are unranked, the only measure of central tendency that's appropriate for a nominal variable is the mode. Additionally, there is no measure of dispersion for a nominal variable. To discuss dispersion for a nominal variable, you need to look at the percentage of cases that appear in the modal category. The higher the number of observations that appear in the modal category, the lower the dispersion. For example, if a variable has 60% of its cases in the modal category, and another variable has 80% of its cases in the modal category, we know the dispersion is higher in the first case, or for the first variable. In that sense, 40% of the observations are dispersed outside of the modal category versus 20% dispersed outside of the modal category. So once again, for nominal variables, the only appropriate measure of central tendency is the mode. Since dichotomous variables are a special case of nominal variables, the mode also is the only appropriate measure for central tendency, and there's no dispersion measure to calculate. Recall that ordinal variables are ranked categories, so because ordinal variables are ranked, the mode and the median are appropriate measures for central tendency. However, the mean requires an arithmetic calculation, and since there is no meaningful distance between categories and ordinal variable, the mean is not appropriate in this instance. The range and interquartile range can also be calculated for an ordinal variable. Finally, continuous variables can use the mode, the median, or the mean, as well as range, interquartile range, and standard deviation. These distinctions are important to note because SPSS will not distinguish between your types of variables when it reports these statistics. That is to say, you can generate a mean for an ordinal variable or a mean for a nominal variable, but it has no substantive meaning. Therefore, the important part of interpreting the data relies on the user. Let's now take a look at how to calculate these quantities in SPSS. Here I have the SAT 2016 PA dataset open. This is the modified data set where we already created the composite average three category variables. Recall from our previous videos that these were ordinal variables created by recoding the continuous composite index. To demonstrate how we generate central tendency and dispersion, we're first going to click the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics, and like we did for frequency distribution tables, Frequencies. First, let's take a look at our nominal variable for region. I move my region variable to the variables being analyzed, and here I'm going to click statistics. The statistics will allow me to call for both our measures of dispersion as well as our measures of central tendency. Recall that since region is a nominal variable, only the mode is appropriate. You also have the option to uncheck displaying frequency distribution tables, which is particularly useful if you're analyzing a continuous variable. Here, since region is categorical, I'll leave this box checked. And here we have our output window. Like we saw before, region has a frequency distribution table, and we have our frequencies, percentages, and cumulative percentages for each regional category. You'll notice up here in our statistics box, it is producing now the mode, and it's saying the mode is 8. That is the Philadelphia Lehigh Valley region. That corroborates down here in the frequency distribution table, where we see that 32% of our observations are in the Philadelphia Lehigh Valley region, or category 8. That is higher than all of the other categories that are listed. Once again, there is no appropriate real measure of dispersion for a nominal variable, so by looking at the percent, knowing that there's 32% of cases in the Philadelphia Lehigh Valley region, we know that 68% of cases are dispersed outside of that category. Let's take a look at now our ordinal variable. So we're going to go back to descriptive statistics, frequencies, 
And here I'm going to select our three category composite average score. Click the statistics box. And here perhaps I want both now the mode, the median, the range. And if you want the interquartile range, you have to do a little bit of calculation on your own by clicking the quartiles. So here we have on the bottom our frequency distribution table, which is exactly the same as we saw in our last set of videos. But we've also now included the median, the mode, the range, and the percentiles uh, for that composite average score. We can see here that the mode is 2. So we look back at our table, we see that middle SAT has 14.1%. That is higher than all of the other categories. Uh, low SAT 12.9, high SAT 13.6. So the mode is 2. So here we can see from our first table that the median is 2. Recall that the median is the observation that is exactly at the midpoint of the data, or if we were thinking in terms of cumulative percent, would be at the 50% point. So we can see here by looking at the cumulative percent in the last column of our frequency distribution table, this makes sense. 31.9% or 206 observations fall within that first category, low SAT. 66.6% .6 of observations are within either the one category or the two category. So we know that more than 31% of observations are going to be ones, and then we know that 31, or really 32 to 66.6 .6 are gonna be in twos. So we know that 50 is between 32 and 66.6, .6, so we know that the median must also be a middle SAT uh, school. Uh, looking then at the range, the range is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. So our highest value would be in our data, the high SAT, which would be a three. Our lowest value for SAT would be the one, so our range is two. To calculate the interquartile uh, range, you need to know the quartiles. So you can ask SPSS for the percentiles, and it'll tell you which category uh, corresponds with each percentile. So in this case, we can simply subtract the first quartile value, which is a one, from the third quartile value, which is a three, and that gives us an interquartile range of two. Now finally, we can run the same type of analysis for a continuous variable. So let's go back to descriptives, frequencies, and let's look at the continuous variable for the actual composite score. Once again, clicking statistics, I can generate the quartiles, the range. In this case, I'm going to ask for the standard deviation as well as the mean. Because this is a continuous variable, I do not want to display the frequency distribution table. So I'm going to uncheck this box and click OK. Here we only get the statistics box instead of getting the whole table. And we can see here that the mean SAT score for all schools was 1,424.18. We have a median score of 1,456.5 and a mode of 1503. We have a standard deviation of 162.797 and a range of 1,023. We can also get our interquartile range by using our calculator and using our third quartile, 1519, and subtracting our first quartile of 1359, which gives us an interquartile range of 160. Um, so you can tell from the, these data uh, that there is a little bit of negative skew. Right, so the mode is a little bit higher than the median, which is a little bit higher than the mean, which says there's a little bit of negative skew that's pulling the mean off of the modal value. Uh, but once again, it should be relatively straightforward and relatively easy to get measures of central tendency and dispersion from SPSS by using the Analyze Descriptive Frequency options and clicking the statistics box and calling for the values you're interested in having. Uh, so that wraps up this really short video on central tendency and dispersion in SPSS.